it uh, has a diagram, uniform seesaw shown below. It's balanced on a fulcrum located at three meters from left hand. And you have uh, two boys with the two different masses. Uh, let me give them a label so that I have something to call them by. M1 and M2. Uh, wait, oops. Um, uh, I think if, uh, so this is the bigger boy, so that's uh, M1. This is the smaller boy, which is M2. Uh, what is the mass of the board? Okay, so this is a standard strategy question, same as um, many other uh, static equilibrium questions. So the, your starting place is drawing free body diagram. And I guess here is where I kind of, um, I'm on the borderline whether to draw the forces directly on this figure or not. But as a matter of good uh, habit, good practice, I would still prefer to uh, draw free body diagram separately to avoid cluttering it with unnecessary information. So technically I'm drawing the free body diagram for the, uh, for the plank or the seesaw. And I will say out loud what the actual source of the force is, but um, it, I, I, I think uh, most of people are not confused. So on the left hand here, there's a downward force of N1, G. And what this technically is the normal force on the seesaw by the boy. Um, so it's the reaction force from the support force pushing the boy up. And similarly on the right hand, there's M2G pulling down or pushing down the right end of the seesaw. And so there are the two forces. You see that it's not quite, um, um, so this is what should be, um, this is what should be in, your, in the back of your head whenever you are dealing with a steady equilibrium. It's the equilibrium condition. So this is a special kind of standard strategic question where you are not trying to find the acceleration, you are not trying to find the angular acceleration, you know what they are, you know acceleration is zero and you know angular acceleration is zero. So the net force is equal to zero and that torque is equal to zero. That's uh, the condition you're trying to fulfill. And technically, these are vector quantities. So as you're drawing your free body diagram, that's the question you should be constantly asking. Is this diagram consistent with zero net force? It's not. There needs to be upward force. So I notice this support point here, which will be providing an upward force. So I draw an upward force of, I guess I'll label it then. It is normal force and it is normal force from the support point. And normally I would stop here because this looks like a diagram where I can make the net force equal to zero and probably net torque equal to zero. Except I guess two things might stop me. If you plug in the numbers and try to see if the net torque is equal to zero, you'll find that it's not. And then you know, reading the question again, you realize it's asking for what is the mass of the board, which means we have to take into account what the mass of the board will be. So I go back through the question and look for these keywords that really should be there. Uniform CISA, um, so that I can assume that the center of mass is at the center, the geometric center of the CISA. So I need to draw this downward force the, the weight, um, this is actual gravitational force pulling down on the seesaw and it's technically acting over the entire length of the seesaw, but this is the special property of the center of mass. You can treat all those gravitational force spread throughout the entire seesaw as if it's acting on that single point center of mass. And I guess I should, so it's eight meter long so this distance here is one meter. All right, so that's my free body diagram. Um, 
Step number one. Step number two, I have to define my coordinate axis. And this is a good point to choose where your center of rotation is. Whenever you are dealing with a torque, you have to be thinking of torque about what point. And when you're dealing with equilibrium situation where net force is equal to zero, you actually have complete freedom where to pick your center of rotation. You can pick it to be left hand here. That's completely within your choice. You can pick it to be anywhere. You can pick it to be center of mass of the seesaw. Here, I would probably go with picking the support point as the center of rotation. I mean, it physically is, so that's one of the reasons it might be a good choice. The other is uh, if I choose my center of rotation here, then what that'll do is it'll make the torque due to the normal force here equal to zero. And what I'm hoping for is that I only need to write down the, the second equilibrium condition equation, and that'll give me enough information to solve for the unknown, the mass of the, um, the mass of the seesaw. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's why I'm choosing that as the center of um, rotation, and I guess my uh, actual coordinate axis will look like. Uh, so that point being origin, this is my x axis, this is my y axis. So that's step number two. Step number three, uh, decompose the force vectors into x and y components. Here, I don't need to. Everything is just in the vertical direction along the y axis. So uh, all that's remaining is step number four, write the Newton's second law equations. So technically I will need, uh, I do write down the net force equation along the y direction. So the normal force minus the, uh, the other normal forces, M1G minus M2G and the gravitational force on the seesaw minus MG that should add up to zero. And uh, my feeling is that I probably won't end up using that equation. So, and now that we are dealing with the rotation, when I say Newton's second law equation, it includes the translational and rotational versions of it. The rotational version involves the net torque. So net torque is equal to, now this is where I need to slow down and, um, apply the definition of net torque carefully, or the definition of torque carefully. Torque is given by lever, oops, I'm misspelling lever. Torque is given by lever arm times force. And in a situation like this, where I can see that the lever arm is just the distances, because they are all perpendicular to the vertical force. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the angle between the displacement and the force vector, they're all 90 degrees. Um, and so the main thing I would worry about is the, the direction of torque. So some of these forces are causing the seesaw to rotate clockwise, and some of these forces are causing the seesaw to rotate counterclockwise. And I would pick one direction as being positive. Let's call clockwise positive. And uh, then the other direction becomes the other sign, negative. And as I write this in that torque equation, I'm going to be careful with the signs. Whenever a, a torque due to a force is clockwise, I give it a positive sign. Whenever a torque due to a force is counterclockwise, I give it a negative sign. So let's uh, write that down. I guess um, I should really just give this a label. Let me call this, um, call this L1, call this L2, and call, oops, I already wrote that down. Call this uh, capital L. So my net torque is, um, the torque due to the, the force at the pivot point is zero. You have zero lever arm. That's why I chose that as a center rotation. And the torque due to gravitational force on the, uh, or let me match this up. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but it'll help me not forget anything. 
So I'm going to line them up so that I'm writing down torque due to each of these forces in a way they match up. So I'm right now doing the torque due to force M1G. So it's going counterclockwise. I'm calling that minus. So the torque here should be minus this lever arm, L1, times the force, M1G. Um, the second one, it, uh, uh, the torque there is clockwise. So it should be plus L2, M2G. And the final term, uh, this torque here, it's clockwise again. So plus capital L, Mg is equal to zero. So when you look at this second equation, you can see that it has everything in terms of known quantities, except for one, the mass of the seesaw. So that's uh, what I was hoping for. I was hoping that I would only need to use the second equation and I don't have to really go to the net force equation because um, it turns out I don't need the normal force from the support anyway. So let me solve this for the, uh, the mass here. So uh, to solve it for the mass, I move all the other terms over to the other side. So LMG is equal to changing the sign plus L1 M1G minus L2 M2G. Let's cancel out some of the things that cancel out. G cancels out and I'm solving for M. So I need to multiply both sides by one over L, which will divide the right hand side by L and cancel out L from here. So this is my answer. Capital M is equal to L1 M1G minus L2, oops, I got canceled G. Um, L1 M1 minus L2 M2 over L. Um, I guess today, let me plug in the numbers. There's one question in particular where I do want to um, end up um, plugging in numbers. So, um, so let me just do that. <laughs> so plugging in the numbers, um, L1 is a three, M1 is a, a 83. So let me do it this way. Three times 83 minus L2 is five times the smaller mass, 45, uh, equal to, and then divided by L, oh, but L is one meter, so that's not gonna change the number. So, okay, so I get positive answer. That's a good sign. That means, um, I guess it worked out. So if I somehow got a negative answer, um, that's what I could get if I mistakenly uh, flip the masses. Um, so, all right, uh, positive answer is good. That's what I was expecting that I, what I should get. So mass is equal to 24 kilograms.